Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I am here today with another narrated art time lapse video and today we're going to be looking at a photo study that I did that is not exactly a photo study because I kind of switched a lot of things around and edited it. But before I talk about my idea and where the idea came from and all that stuff, let's start talking about what's going on in Krita right now. Um, so basically, in Krita, I'm drawing my idea for the prompt, which, um, real quick, I, I know I wasn't going to explain a whole lot, but I might as well at least talk about the prompt. The prompt for this particular artwork is called Smoke, so we're supposed to illustrate something smoke. And my original idea was pretty much, you know, what became in the photo or what was in the final illustration was pretty much my original idea, which my original idea was, you know, instead of uh, people having heads, they have smoke for heads. That was, you know, kind of like this iconic, you know, image kind of got pasted on my head when I read that prompt, you know, and I was like, wow, that looks like a striking image in my imagination. I kind of want to see it. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, but, um, the final illustration is so different though from what I had envisioned originally in my head, because what I had originally envisioned in my head is what I'm trying to sketch out right now, which is, I imagine this guy walking in a park, right? The smoke guy, the guy who has smoke for his head instead of a regular head. He's walking through a park and that's where what the scene is, right? And I was originally going to go with this original idea, but uh, you'll see what happens <laughs> after I finish the sketch. So basically what happened after the sketch is that, you know, I, I was just messing around. I did this real quick sketch just to kind of see where things are going. And then once I started doing the environment around the guy, it was all wonky. So I was just like, man, I, I, I have to look at a reference of a, of a park, you know, just to get like some good ideas and how to lay out my perspective and whatnot. And that's when things kind of just like went down the left field. <laughs> Because when I started doing my Google search, instead of finding a good picture or a bunch of photos of parks to inspire me in my illustration, what ended up happening was that I ended up in the website pixels.com, which is a great resource, by the way. It's an amazing, amazing website. Um, you, as an artist, should check it out because they have free reference photos, basically, for use, you know, so long as you credit the photographer and whatnot, yeah, da, 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 and all that good stuff. So, anyways, site is really awesome. Um, and I might as well mention, like, my other favorite sites to go to for photos, which is um, textures.com and photobash.org. And... Um, I've always been hearing about Pixabay. It's another great place to grab photos from, but I've never actually explored that site yet. So, but those are like great sites for you to take a look at. But anyways, I found pixels.com and specifically I found Edward Ayer from Brazil. If I'm not wrong, that's where the photographer lives. Uh, awesome, awesome guy. Awesome, awesome photographer. Check out his uh, Pixels page. Um, but yeah, so I was Google searching for a park, for a great park, and instead I ended up finding a headless photo of a skateboarder. And it wasn't that she was headless, it was just the way that Edward Ayer cropped the photo, she was basically headless. And when I saw that, I was just like, oh, that's such a cool photo, it's kind of like what I was looking for. So that's how the illustration came about basically you know so instead of me doing my original idea which is this guy right here this is my original idea right here was for this guy to be walking in a park and I did not think about the bird on a leash like I don't know where that idea came from that idea came from left field too like that came out of nowhere when I was catching this guy I'm like okay he's gonna be walking a pet that's the reason why he was in a park 
I'm like, well, what kind of pet? Oh, let's make it a bird. <laughs> like, what? Like, I didn't expect the birds to come out of my head when I was sketching this out. So that was kind of hilarious. And I'm kind of sad that that part of the original concept did not make it through the final illustration. Because that would have been hilarious if there's a bird on a leash in my illustration. But obviously it didn't. So anyway, so yeah, like you can see me sketch out this guy, he's pausing in his walk. He's supposed to be originally walking was what I wanted him to do, but now he's just standing, looking at his phone uh, or whatnot. And yeah, once you start seeing me draw out the part and what the part looked like, you'll see that I kind of stopped midway through and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to finish this. I'm just going to look at pictures of a part. So here I am drawing at the sidewalk and then I'm about to draw another sidewalk and I was like, man, forget it. I'm going to go to Google and then, yeah, uh, history was made because I ended up finding Edward Ayer in pixels.com. And so here I am, I'm back again in Krita after a brief little pause. Well, maybe it wasn't so brief. I don't, I don't remember how much time I spent on Google. But um, yeah, after going to Google, I found this photo of Edward Ayer. Again, like I said, it's a headless photo of a skateboarder. And, you know, it's cropped in such a way as you can't see her head. And so, yeah, I was just like... You know, and that seems so perfect because I was looking for a photo or my idea was to substitute the head anyway. So, you know, seeing this photo that's cropped, the head is cropped out, kind of made me think, oh, yeah, well, then I could replace the head with the smoke. So, yeah, it totally worked out and it's awesome. But, yeah, now that the photo um, is pulled up on the left, obviously what I did was... Um, I basically started doing a photo study it is basically pretty much what this whole artwork is which is different because a lot of the majority of my stuff are all just like from imagination and sketched out and whatnot and yeah I use references sure I look at photos and images but for the most part they're all original so this is just pretty much like the first except for studies I do I do studies obviously for master studies I do master studies, but I haven't posted a photo study in my YouTube yet. So this is, you know, one of the odd ones that I'm posting as uh, one of my artworks and in, in my social media. So yeah, but as you can see, it's not like a direct translation of the photo. Like I did a, a lot of edits on this particular uh, piece. Uh, like one of the things that I edited obviously is, you know, the size or the, not the size, but the cropping of the image of the illustration. Obviously there's more head space and foot space on mine. I also made like some uh, color choices that I thought was kind of accidental, but it worked out really great. Like I accidentally put some purple on on the girl's shirt and red as her shoes which you know we can't really see the shoes of the original 
photo or we can't really see the shoes in the original photo either so we don't really know what the color of the original shoes are but for mine I ended up choosing red and like all those colors choices are kind of unique like um kind of ended up doing this really funky thing which I really really like towards the end of the illustration um but yeah, uh, instead of like, you know, directly like copying the photo, you know, tracing the photo and then just coloring it in, like, you know, sometimes I, I sometimes I do that, you know. This one, I just block things out, which is what I typically do when I do my master studies is I block things out um, based on the photo, you know. So you saw me blocked out like her arms, which is a great anchor, you know. Like drawing those arms in kind of like solidified in my head how her figure was going to be, you know. So I blocked those out. I blocked her body, which became very easy because the arms were there. And then everything else just kind of just came out of that eventually. And um, as soon as I have them all blocked out, like you can see me block... Um, uh, well, right now you're seeing me work on, on the background. But basically after I blocked out the body and then the skateboard, um, I obviously zoom out of the photo and then did the smoke and then the background, which is what I'm working on right now. And the background is really, really easy. You know, I kind of just followed uh, the guideline of this value range of what was in the photo. So like in the photo, they have a um an effect oh man i forgot what this film effect is called but uh it's like a vintage film effect oh, i forgot what what that film effect is called but it's a photo effect where basically uh everything in the edges of the photo is dark and then just basically what's on the center is light so i kind of just copied that and just made my road like that um behind the girl in the photo there's like a pedestrian line or a traffic line and it's so behind the girl most people wouldn't even see it so i decided to move it over to the right um just to anchor the photo setting you know just to make it look like you know the girl is on a road of some sort so i added that pedestrian line slash traffic line slash whatever line that is but we all know what line that is i just i can't think of the right terms right now um so yeah but after i did all those like the road was pretty much done so everything re else really just became um the girl so after i did that i started smudging which is what i'm doing right now so i just finished with with the background and i'm basically smudging some of the colors around in the foreground area so i did the smoke and i'm about to do the lights and then you see me work on the rest of the figure with all the nice little colors that I blocked out in that area. So, and then after this particular um, move that I made, or after this particular routine that, I'm, that I do, where I smudge colors around to make it look more painterly, after that, then I did a sketch on top of it to kind of just help me figure out where things are. Um, so yeah, like my steps are like really off in reverse with this particular image. Like my process workflow process is not as it usually is where typically I do the sketch beforehand and then smudge the sketch together with the colors. But this time around, I just smudge colors without the sketch. And then I did the sketch uh, just to kind of help me figure where things are. are. Um, but yeah, um, I I did a quick glance at this video before I started doing this recording and you know I made a note about how cool it was that on my sketch I decided to make give her or I decided to give my character a sleeveless hoodie because in the original photo photograph the girl is just wearing like a just a regular sleeveless shirt you know so I thought like the sleeveless hoodie was a nice little touch um, and I uh, really I think that's pretty much the only thing that's different aside from the colors which I thought the colors was really cool and this is what I was mentioning earlier about how I made some choices that were kind of accidental by nature and I didn't intend for it to happen that way but then 
it did and <laughs> it was really cool so like one of the choices that i accidentally did was like putting purple on her gray bluish gray shirt that was cool you know because when that color got blended in like it just it looked really nice and smooth and then the yellow of the ukulele that the skateboarder girl is holding like that got accidentally blended into her right and left hand and when that happened i decided to keep that and not change the colors of her hand so i thought that was a fancy nice little detail that also happened and again the red shoes which i've mentioned before which i didn't really expect to do but it happened so so yeah all together like this this particular photo study slash illustration it's just it was just really cool you know like everything all just came together nicely with this particular illustration and and the photograph helped a lot obviously because it's always easy if you have a reference you know so yeah I really love this illustration. I really dig this illustration. I thought it came out really, really nice. Perfect. So now I pretty much just finished the sketch and I um, basically started my whole detailing process which you know this part well actually I haven't started the detailing process yet right now what I'm really doing is or what I'm doing right now is uh, accentuating shadows real quick which is really part of my detailing process but it was slightly different because um, I did it really quick and I think it might have been with a multiply brush but I'm not sure but I just wanted to add some real quick shadows before I uh, really start the whole detailing process. And again, like I mentioned with the whole detailing process, it's it's pretty much rinse and repeat. What I do is, you know, I delineate my edges or make my edges straighter or make my shapes read clearer. And I accentuate the shadows. Uh, so right now I don't think I accentuated the shadows as much because I already went and did that whole shadow accentuation just now. Um, but yeah, I accentuated my shadows and add highlights. Now for this particular uh, photo study slash illustration, it's, things are going to be a little bit different because there's a line, uh, the line sketch. I decided to somehow keep for now and basically what I'm going to do with that line sketch is I'm just going to end up painting over it is what I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, uh, I just did a value check just to check my values and I think about right about now, um, oh I totally forgot that I did this little edit where uh, I corrected the uh, uh, perspective of the girl kind of move her around a little bit just so that uh, she's not too wonky on one side and am I I'm trying to remember if I merged everything into one layer or if I decided to keep 
working on just the foreground layer and leave the background layer alone and it looks like I left the background layer alone and yeah I think I'm just gonna work on the foreground layer but yeah there's the eyes of the girl I really thought that this was a cool idea too giving her glowing eyes or um, having the eyes of the girl glow I thought that was very cool <sighs> But, oh wow, okay, I totally forgot about this part. I didn't realize that I decided to smudge the sketch lines. I thought I just was just going to paint over it. Yeah. And I watched this video too, like right before making this commentary. <laughs> like I should have paid attention. But in my defense, the video that I watched was like four times faster than this one. So it was even uber faster than <laughs> than this. But yeah, this this is my typical workflow right here. Um, after merging the sketch onto the base paint, I would typically smudge the sketch into the base paint so that it kind of slowly disappears into it and mixes mixes with it. And that's what I just did, uh, or that's what I'm just doing now, mixing all those hard edges. Because they end up adding a little bit of shadows to the image anyway, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, after that, it's like my typical routine of delineating my edges, making my shapes read clearer, by sharpening my edges, accentuating the shadows, which I don't think I'm going to do as much because my shadows are pretty great right about now. And then adding highlights and if there's some leftover black lines I will paint over it so that it's not as clear as it was so yeah that's what I'm going to be doing in the next few minutes
this illustration is pretty close to being finished so I guess I could just wrap up my final thoughts about this image um, and you can see that I just got done working with the ukulele and uh, her hands and just like as I had mentioned, you know, I had accidentally put some yellow on her hands and I thought it was marvelous. Like how that color, you know, just came out. Uh, I just, I mean, I'm just like looking at it right now or before when I was working on it. And, or when the, it was show, when the video was showing me work on, on the hands. Looking at that part, I thought was just very cool because I, I, I thought those yellow hands just look really, really unique. So yeah. And then obviously that pink on her sleeveless um, hoodie, it's just, it's odd. It, it's kind of like, you know, intriguing for it to be there, but at the same time it looks cool. And then, course like the detail of her having a sleepless hoodie which you know I didn't intend for it to be originally but then I just sketch it out that way that came out really nice so yeah uh, I added a little bit of color dodge which I don't really think I kept most of it anyways because it was getting too bright but yeah value checked it was pretty nice so overall it was very it came out very very good so Anyways, thank you guys for watching this with me. Thank you for watching the process with me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.